Hey there, buddies, and welcome to Volume 46 of Furberry's Fables. Today's story is very special, as it's the first one that's been written specifically for my channel about me. If you like it, please show your support by leaving a like and a comment down below, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Today's story is Agrizophobia by Jellybean. Slowly she placed me down, her eyes heavy and her emotions full. You are going to help me. You have to. A tear fell gently from her eye. Something is going on with Aiden. You have to show me. I tried to smile. I tried to reassure her, but that was not within my design. We will figure this out one way or another. We will figure this out. And with the wipe of a tear, she turned and left me alone in the cold, dark living room. She had been very clear with me from the start. She ensured that I knew exactly when to watch. I was to sleep, and I was only too awake when someone neared, and when they did, then I was to watch. She lived alone with her son Aiden, and she was clearly becoming upset with a growing situation with the house. A situation that she was hardly forecoming with when she first spoke with me that bright and sunny morning a few days ago. Looking back now, I guess no introduction could have prepared me for what I would see event every night following. What follows is my exact account of the incidents, no tampering and no fabrication. After all, my word is exact. My eyes opened as the young boy moved through the living room carrying with him the excitement of his youth. The story about the bear tonight, please, mummy, he shouted excitedly as he came stampeding past me. That one is my very most favorite one. A few seconds later, she carried me in, barely acknowledging me as she moved just behind him. Not again, Aiden, are you not tired of that one yet? Aiden stopped just before the stairs, turning with a smile on his face. Oh, I could never get tired of this one, mummy. It's the best. I really do hope that I make it to the end tonight. Okay then, just once more, okay? The teddy that came to life? Yes, please, the teddy that came to life. Slowly she shook her head and followed Aiden as he ran happily up the stairs. The teddy that came to life. Slowly my eyes closed and sleep quickly came. Footsteps. When I opened my eyes again, the room was dark and the shadows hung heavily within each corner. The air felt colder, and the emptiness within my direct line of sight felt odd. After a few moments, the footsteps grew louder, and the shadow of a figure moved slowly down the staircase in front of me. Before long, the sight of Aiden moving into the living room came into focus. What is he doing here? It is way past his bedtime. He moved quickly past me towards the kitchen, wiping at his eyes as he walked. He must be thirsty. After a few seconds, the small boy disappeared into the next room as I willed my head to move, if only. After a few seconds, I heard Aiden turn on the water and begin to fill a cup. He should already be sleeping. This hour of the night was not fit for children of his age. Aiden should be sleeping. He should be dreaming. Within his bed, he would be warm. He would be safe. This cold room was no place for him at all. After a few more seconds, I heard the water turn off, and carefully Aiden set the cup back down. Time moved, and I expected to see him move past me once more. I expected to see him ascend the staircase and move back to the comfort of his room, for him to go back to sleep and allow me to sleep, but he never came back out of the kitchen. Where is he? Silence. The great clock across from me ticked loudly. Silence. Something is not right. An immense crash of glass shattered the peacefulness of the night. The horrid sound broke the silence, the vibration of its violence almost causing me to fall from my position. And then just as the forceful noise dissipated, a horrible blood-curdling scream pierced the house and rattled the walls. Mommy! Aiden appeared in front of me as he ran with his speed towards the stairs. He stumbled upwards, continuing to scream for his mother as he quickly took the steps and before long he disappeared from sight. My heart began to pound as I willed my eyes to remain open, but unfortunately it was my time to sleep yet again. 
In the morning, she came to me. Once Aiden had left for school, she approached me, desperate to know what I had seen the night prior. You have to help me, please. I cannot cope. It's getting worse. Gladly, I recounted my story to her with an exact precision. This doesn't make any sense. I agreed with her, but my nature was not to reassure. My nature was simply to retell. This doesn't make any sense. Before long, she escorted me back, and once again I slept. However, I did not sleep for too long. I opened my eyes once again as Aiden came rushing past, carrying with him the anticipation of another bedtime story. The one about the bear tonight, please, mummy. This time she paused before answering, her growing exhaustion clear, if only but to me. Aiden, again? Frantically, the young boy nodded. Of course, mummy. It's my very most favorite one. That bear is such a naughty little bear. I hope I manage to stay awake for the ending tonight. Slowly, she shook her head. You never do. And with that, she followed Aiden upstairs and allowed me to move back into my slumber. Eyes closed, and then eyes opened. This time, the family cat had brushed against me. Furry little thing. It purred slightly as it moved against me before leaping down onto the floor as it strutted slowly into the kitchen and out of sight. Again, there were footsteps on the stairs, and again, Aiden appeared from the shadows. Miko, Aiden spoke with a hush whisper. Come back, don't go in there. He's afraid. I willed my mouth to move. I willed a warning to come, but I was powerless. I was born to watch, and all I could do was watch. Watch as Aiden descended the stairs and carefully moved through the darkness, softly into the kitchen and out of sight again. Miko? Aiden, come back. It was of no use. I was a voice trapped within a form, trapped by a purpose and imprisoned by a design. I was a voyeur and I was helpless. Where is he? Again, the horrid infinity of silence followed. The clock across from me again ticked loudly, perfectly reminding the room of the dire hour. Something bad was going to happen. I could feel it, and there was not a single thing I could do to help. And then against the backdrop of the hour, a nasty sound came bleeding out through the kitchen. Something is in pain. Miko? Oh, Miko, mummy, something is wrong with Miko. The sound was horrid. The sound was death. Something horrible had happened to the family cat, and whatever it was, it had clearly distressed Aiden. Yet again, he passed me with an incredible speed, as the tears formed heavily within his eyes. Mummy, Miko is dying. I watched as he tripped on the stairs before steadying himself as he continued his flight. Mummy, we have to help Miko. I felt as if I could feel a tear, but I knew that was not possible as my eyes began to close. I knew that something bad had happened, but I could not help my nature. As much as I wanted to assist, as much as I wanted to just stay awake, my purpose would not allow me. The thought followed me into yet another slumber. There is nothing you can do. In the morning, she again came to me. This time, her eyes were full with emotion, and her lips trembled as she spoke. Show me. You have to show me. Something killed our cat. I need to know. Whatever is happening, I need to know. I did not hold back. I told her about what I had heard, what I had seen, but nothing I could say seemed to satisfy her. This does not make sense, she sobbed loudly as I silently agreed with her. This does not make sense. Eyes closed and then eyes opened. This time I was tired. Everything I had seen, everything I had not seen, it was all getting to be a little too much to bear. These people, Aiden and her, they needed me, but there was nothing I could do. Nothing within my entire little body. There was nothing I could do to help. The situation fell heavily across me as Aiden darted past with a youthful excitement. The story about the bear tonight, please, mummy. Slowly, she shook her head. I cannot tonight, sweetie. Mummy is very tired. Aiden shook his head. But mummy, it is my most very favorite one. Everybody does not understand that little bear. I really hope that I hear the end tonight. I watched on as she held back her tears. You never do, she spoke softly, fighting back tears. You never do. Aiden smiled and turned, leading the way up the stairs to the comfort of his bedroom as his mother wearily moved behind him. 
I watched with a heavy heart as they both disappeared from sight. My eyes began to close as the thought materialized. It was there. Of course it was going to be there. What was going to happen tonight? I could not linger on it for long. I was not made to. And with that, eyes closed and eyes opened. No. Stop. Slowly she picked me up, moving me towards the television set. Please, you do not want to see this. She did not listen and I could not blame her. After all, there was no way that she would be able to hear me. You do not want to see what happened last night. With bloodshot eyes, she slowly lowered me down, plugging the cable into the back of my purple fur, right into the display port which would access my hard drive where the surveillance footage was stored, and after a few seconds, I began to retell the story on the television set. Aiden, she spoke softly. Last night, I found him passed out. He had cuts on his arms. I think that he was attacked. You have to show me what happened. I need to know. No. Please stop. Carefully, she moved forward and hit play. I need to know. I could not help it, despite my protests, despite my reluctance, despite knowing what the information would do to her, I gladly retold it. Slowly, the images burned onto the television set as I reluctantly followed my design. Eyes open. This is what happened last night. My eyes were finally opened. And when they were, the sight of Aiden slowly creeping down the stairs came into focus. Within his hand, gleaming brightly within the darkness of the night, was the sight of a blade. No, what is going on? His movements were odd, and his limbs were stiff. With each forced motion, he moved his body forward with force and distended the stairs as the smile on his face grew wider. He pulled his body forward, pausing in the center of the living room as he slowly began to pull up his left sleeve. After a few seconds, he raised the blade, bringing it to rest against the exposed flesh on his arm, and then he broke the silence as he began to speak. The teddy bear was a naughty bear, but all he wanted was love. The daddy bear had left the mommy bear when he was just young, so the little bear played tricks. He was such a naughty bear, but all that he ever wanted was love. Why did daddy leave us? The naughty little bear would cry. Slowly, he brought the knife against his arm as the blood began to run. It's because of that bitch upstairs. No, this cannot be true. I tried to scream. I tried to call for her, but I could not break my meaning. I could not fight what I had been born to be. All I could do was watch. Watch on as the little boy destroyed himself with his sorrow and annihilated his soul with his pain. I am powerless. The video stopped as I again tried to call out to her. I tried my best to scream, my best to warn her, my best to alert her, but all I could do was watch on as Aiden approached from behind with the knife in hand. She turned with surprise as he began to speak. We finally made it to the end, you stupid bitch, he smiled, preparing for his final trick. Aiden? This is how it ends, mummy. The naughty bear played tricks forever and ever. She went to scream, but it was too late.